Um, today we are going to talk about our vocab of polynomials um, and we're also going to use some operations. So operations meaning addition, subtraction, and multiplication. We are not going to even think about dividing yet. Um, that's something that Algebra 2 will take care of. So again, vocab, operations, um, and for our polynomials. So let's go ahead and get started. What the definition of a polynomial is. So we've dealt with like trinomials and binomials, but a polynomial is an expression that can have constants and variables and exponents, but there's going to be no division by a variable and only whole number exponents. So that's important. So we're never going to divide by a variable, so never going to divide by a variable, and our exponents will only be whole number exponents, so no negatives and no fractions. These polynomials, we always look at their characteristics, so we name them by their degree, their degree, and their number of terms. So, for example, when we called it a trinomial, when we did trinomial factoring, it was called a trinomial because it had three terms. Okay, and then the degree of the polynomial is that highest exponent. And we're going to talk in a few slides about how we name it based on that highest degree. Okay, so the highest degree on the variable is how, how we're going to name it as well as the number of terms. This example here, we have 3x to the 4th minus 5x squared plus 5x minus 10. So again, this is a polynomial because it has no division of variables and all of our exponents are, are whole numbers because even the exponent on this x would be a one, we just don't write it. So this would be a good polynomial. Okay, the degree on this one would actually be a four because that highest exponent, the highest little number is a four and we call this a polynomial because polynomial because it has more than four it has four terms and more than three okay so these ones down here because we're dividing by x this is not a polynomial because we have a fractional exponent also not a polynomial and again not a whole number a negative number mean this is also not a polynomial so those are just some examples of what polynomials don't look like but our first example is what a polynomial will look like chart and this is how we are going to name our polynomials on the degree so this is how we use the name of a degree and then we're also going to talk by number of terms okay so if we only have one term we call it a monomial monomial mono meaning one okay if our degree is one so you'll notice here in the next one our degree here is just a one. That's what we call something that's linear. So this is a linear function, okay? But notice there are two different terms. We can't combine them because they're not like terms. That's when we have a binomial. So number of terms, two, binomial, okay? When our degree is two, our highest degree is two, that's when we have a quadratic. Remember, we solved quadratics. That's our trinomials. Okay, x squared is a quadratic. x cubed is a cubic function. x to the fourth is a quartic function, and x to the fifth is a quintic function. So that's as high as we're really going to go there in terms of degree. But again, you're going to make sure you know this chart because you might be asked to name on degree as well as number of terms. So again, one term is monomial, two terms binomial, three terms trinomial and four terms or more anything four or more is just a polynomial poly just means many so one monomial two binomial three trinomial four polynomial what we're going to do here is we're going to add polynomials so when we add polynomials we're simply going to combine like terms so when i see an x squared like this i want to treat it as an x squared. Again, x squared means x times x. So the only thing I want to combine x squareds with are other x squareds. So when I'm asking the question, I'm saying, okay, how many x squareds do I have? My answer is still going to be x squareds. 
So I'm just asking how many total x squareds do I have? Because I have a negative 4 here, but I'm adding 6 more of them. So if we think of negative 4 plus 6, that means I'm going to have 2 total x squareds. I'm not going to change the exponent because I'm just combining like terms. Again, I'm asking the question, how many x squareds do I have? Okay. In this example, I would have 2 x squareds. Now, the next I would look for is an, a regular x. And you'll see over here, we have a regular x. So we might want to box that one since I underlined the x squareds. Maybe we want to box all of our x's and combine them. So again, the question is, how many x's do we have? Well, since I don't have any to add to that negative 5, I'm just going to drop down that negative 5x. Now, lastly, if we want to circle, we're going to circle all the numbers. And I have a negative 10 and a positive 4. So negative 10 plus 4, that gives me a negative 6. So again, we're just combining like terms. No terms are changing. Okay, We're just combining what we see. How many x squareds do we have? We had 2 x squareds. How many x's? We have negative 5 x's. And the numbers, again, negative 6. So again, we want to write this in standard form. This is something that might be a little new. But standard form. That means we want to write our highest exponent to our lowest exponent. So what that means is highest, meaning the highest exponent I had here was a 2. The next would have been oh, x to the first. Notice there's no x's on my 6, so that would be the lowest. So your number will always be in the end. The number without a variable is always in the end. So standard form is highest exponent to lowest exponent to another addition okay again we're going to find our highest exponent so that would here would be x squareds and we're going to combine all the x squareds so we have 5x squared and we're adding it to 8x squared again i'm just asking how many total x squareds do i have so my final answer is going to still just be x squared so if i have 5 over here and i have 8 over here 5 plus 8 is 13. So in the end, I have 13x squared. That's it. We're just combining. We're not changing them. I'm just asking how many x squareds there are. Next, we would look for regular x's. So I might box these. Here I have a negative 7x, and I'm going to combine it with a negative 3x. So again, how many x's do I have? Negative 7 and negative 3 makes a negative 10x. I'm just asking the question. How many x's do I have? Lastly, combine our numbers. 13 and 14 would make 27. Again, so I'm writing it in standard form because my highest exponent comes first. And my lowest exponent is at the very end. Okay, so this is just addition. What does it change when we have subtraction? All I like to think is notice because of these parentheses, what we're going to do is we're going to distribute this negative and then I'm going to drop all my parentheses. So what's in front will stay the same, 5x or x squared plus 5x plus 2. Now I'm going to distribute this negative and no more parentheses. So negative times a positive 3x would give me a negative 3x. And a negative times a positive 3 just gives me a negative 3. So I'm dropping the parentheses because now what I see is just a problem again where we're going to combine all those like terms. So again, the question of how many x squareds do we have? Are there any other x squareds in this equation? There's not, so I only have one x squared. Next, I ask the question, okay, how many x's do I have? Well, if I box my x's here, I have a positive five and a negative three. That's gonna give me a positive two x. Lastly, I have my numbers, which is a positive two and a negative three because of me distributing that negative. So then we're gonna get a negative one. Again, in standard form, we have highest exponent to lowest exponent, and that's simply all it is. So after you distribute the negative, we just again ask the question, how many of each do we have? Combine those like terms. Subtraction. Okay, again, remember with subtraction, all we're going to do is distribute the negative to all of the terms in the parentheses to follow. And then we're going to drop that. So again, I'm just going to bring down this first one. So 7x squared minus 2x plus 12. Now, essentially, all of the signs are just going to change here. So we're just going to get a negative x squared, negative 3x, and then a positive 3. So then I'm going to look at combining what I can, combining those like terms. So here we have 7x squared and a negative x squared. 
So again, I'm just asking the question, how many x squareds do we have? So 7 minus 1 would give me 6x squared. Then I'm going to look at my regular x's. We have negative 2 and negative 3, so that's going to give me a negative 5x. Again, the terms aren't going to change. And then the 12 and the positive 3 gives me plus 15. So again, with subtraction, you distribute that negative. It's going to change all those signs and then drop the parentheses. Okay, so you can just drop the parentheses and combine like terms. So all it's going to do is change those signs of the um, expression in parentheses. And then, like I said, you just combine what you can. None of the terms will change. The amount might. Okay, so we're still having x squareds, x's, and regular numbers. Look like then when we multiply. So here, hopefully you remember with multiplying that we have to FOIL. What that means is we're going to do the first, outer, inner, and last. Essentially, we're going to take this first term and multiply it by both of the second terms. And then we're going to do the same thing with the second term. We're going to multiply the second term by both of the second terms in that parentheses to follow. So now this is when terms change in their form. So we have an x squared times an x. Now what this means is, again, this power of 2 means we have x times x, and we're multiplying that by another x. So then essentially, how many x's are we multiplying together? That's 3. So we represent that as the exponent. So x squared times x gives me x cubed. And then we have x squared times a negative 5. So that's just going to be negative 5x squared. Then we have 3x times x. So here, when we have 3x and we multiply by x, the 3 remains, so we still have a plus 3. But now we have x times x. So there's two x's being multiplied, so that's x squared. And then the last one, we have 3x times a negative 5. So this one, we're going to take the numbers and multiply together to get a negative 15 and bring along that x. So after we multiply it out, now we're going to combine like terms. So notice I see two x squareds here. So we want to make just one x squared. Again, we're counting how many x squareds are there. So a negative 5 and a positive 3 would give me a negative 2x squared. I'm going to bring down my x cubed and bring down my negative 15x because they have nothing to combine with. Again, keep it in standard form, highest exponent to lowest exponent. This would be my final answer. So again, any questions, make sure you jot those down. Example, we're going to take the first parentheses and we're going to distribute it not twice this time, but three times because there are three terms in my second set of parentheses. Okay, so here we're going to have 4x times an x squared. So again, x squared just means x times x. So we have 4x times x times x. So again, we're going to leave it as 4. 4 will stay. There's no other numbers that change the number. And how many x's do we have? Now we have x cubed. Okay, we're going to do the same idea when we have 4x times a negative 7x. So the numbers get multiplied together to give us this negative 28, but then we also have x times x. So how many x's are multiplied together? That would be x squared. There's two x's multiplied together. And then lastly, we have 4x times a negative 15. So this time we just multiply our numbers. That's going to give me a negative 60, and there's no other x's to change my x's, so then we're just going to bring down the x. After we multiply, we'd look to see if there's anything we can combine, if there's any like terms. There is not, so our final answer, as long as we have it in standard form, would be 4x cubed minus 28x squared minus 60x. Okay, so again, I want to thank you for taking good notes, and I will see you when I see you.